Welcome to the UK Travel Planning Podcast. Your host is the founder of the UK Travel Planning website, Tracy Collins. In this podcast, Tracy shares destination guides, travel tips, and itinerary ideas, as well as interviews with a variety of guests who share their knowledge and experience of UK travel to help you plan your perfect UK vacation. Join us as we explore the UK from cosmopolitan cities to quaint villages, from historic castles to beautiful islands, and from the picturesque countryside to seaside towns. Hi, and welcome to the UK Travel Planning Podcast. In this episode, I share my top tips to help you choose the best day trips from London, including factors to consider when deciding which day trips to add into your itinerary. I'll provide a taste of some of the most popular day trips trip options with practical considerations which may influence your choice of where to visit, including your interests, how far you want to travel, plus the advantages and disadvantages of independent travel, group tours or private driver guided tour options. In the second segment of the podcast, I'm joined by John Coupland of John England Tours, who specialises in private driver guided tours of Southeast England. John shares with us trends he's experienced in 2022 for those who have booked day tours from London with him, plus three of his most popular options, including Tudor and medieval-focused day trips. But let's first chat about what to consider when planning a day trip from London. Firstly, why do I recommend adding a day trip into your London itinerary, you may ask? Well, if you have the time, more than four or five days in the capital, you may enjoy getting out of the hustle and bustle to see more of what the UK has to offer. As I've said on many occasions, London is great, but it's not representative of England or the UK. There is just so much more to see and experience. The advantage of taking some day trips is that it will broaden your experience of the UK beyond London, even if it's only a taste. At least try to add one day trip into your itinerary if you can. The second consideration is how to choose where to go. There are so many places that it's possible to visit on a day trip from London. So how do you choose the places that are worth your time and meet your needs and interests? Well, I would recommend creating a list of the places that appeal and shortlisting from there. Does a city, the countryside, a seaside town appeal, or is there a particular destination connected with something of interest to you? For example, fans of Harry Potter. Why not choose the Harry Potter Studio day trip? Do you love Downton Abbey? Choose the High Clare day trip. Are you a fan of the Beatles? Why not take a day trip from London to Liverpool? Are you a Francophile? Why not spend the day in Paris? And yes, it is doable. Are you a fan of the royal family? Why not visit the King's residence at Windsor? Are you looking for quaint English villages? The Cotswolds are for you. Do you enjoy history and architecture? A day trip to Oxford or Cambridge would suit you. Are you a history lover? Well, there are so many destinations to choose from. Let's go with Bath. Or maybe closer to London. What about Hampton Court Palace? Do you love castles? Perhaps visit Hever Castle. Are you a literary lover? Jane Austen fans, why not head to Bath or Winchester? If you love Shakespeare, Stratford-upon-Avon is the day trip for you. Those are just a few of the examples of the day trips that you can include in your itinerary from London. Thirdly, one considering which day trip to choose, how far do you want to travel? Do you prefer a destination that's closer to London or are you happy to spend a few hours on a train or coach getting there? Lastly, think about how you're going to get to your chosen day trip destination. Many places, such as Bath, Windsor, Oxford and Cambridge, for example, are easy day trips by train. We have an article on the UK Travel Planning website which details the most popular destinations accessible for a day trip from London by train. And yes, this does include Paris. So just do do check that out in the show notes for this episode. If you prefer to join a group tour, there are many available options. One of the advantages of a group tour is that many combine a few destinations in one day. For example, Stonehenge and Bath are often combined. This is great if you have limited time. However, the disadvantages are that you may feel rushed and there is no flexibility to spend longer in places of particular interest to you. Private driver tour guides are another option. They're not the cheapest. This is a truly great way to explore your chosen destination. The ability to tailor-make your day based on your interests and recommendations from a tour guide who knows the area well 
leads to deeper experiences, and the ability to ask questions and learn more about the destination. So those are our tips and considerations when planning a day trip from London. We have a dedicated article on the UK travel planning websites which details all the top destinations with one-day itinerary ideas, information about how to get there, including recommended tours from London, plus practical tips for making the most of your visit. You will find a link to that article in the show notes. That leads me nicely into the next segment in a chat to private tour driver tour guide John Coupland of John England Tours, who shares information about some of the most popular day trips in Southeast England. This is John's third time on the podcast, so thank you, John, for agreeing to once again share your knowledge and experience with our listeners. Thank you for the introduction, Tracy. Glad to be back. Uh, so I must have done something right the last couple of times. So <laughs> being invited for a third time, so. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> so what's been going on? What a year it's been. Uh, really been fun, full of enjoyment. So good to see international visitors again. Um, so delivering, uh, as you mentioned, uh, private tours uh, to um, various places in southeast England, uh, castles and historic houses. So... I've got a few observations. Would you like me to share them? Yes, please. That'd be great. Okay, great. Uh, so based on my experiences, this is what's been happening. So, of course, the booking lead times are or have been, you know, quite short compared to pre-pandemic times. And I totally understand that. But, of course, with that in mind, it keeps uh, driver guides like me on our toes. Um, so... What really has been happening is a lot of my guests have been inquiring uh, to go a bit deeper uh, with their tours. Now, what I mean by that is rather than just book some listed tours on my website, they want to go a little bit further, perhaps with full day tours, okay, um, or even two day tours, and they don't have to be back um, to back. Um, occasionally, I do three day tours. But I wouldn't say that I'm a multi-day operator, for example. Um, so the, the popular ones have been um, those based on a Tudor theme, uh, because people have found me uh, or my listings uh, for Hampton Court Palace, um, Heber Castle, and various other locations in Southeast England. And in fact, I already merged those two together as a listed tour. And that's what's called a to the day tour. Um, so rather than do Hampton Court Palace separately and then allocate another day for Heber Castle, and of course I can do that, they want to merge it into one day. So my response to that was to list a new tour, um, which was launched before uh, this year. And it was great to see that working. And uh, so for Hampton Court Palace, for those who have been there or know about it, it is ginormous. So for that particular two-day tour, um, I'll meet my guests there, already parked my car on site, and we cover the Tudor aspects of Hampton Court Palace and not mm -hmm. the William and Mary, because there just ain't enough time. Um, so my guests will grab some lunch, and then we hop in our car, my car. And I'll drive them for about an hour to the beautiful Kent countryside. And we continue that to the theme, um, hence to the day tour. Um, and I guide, uh, continue the guiding at Heber Castle, which is, of course, Anne Boleyn's former family home. You have uh, managed to you know, merge two, two popular places that people want to visit. Um, and certainly excellent sort of, you know, those day trips that people want to do and manage to merge them like that, John. So... I'm sure there'll be um, plenty of people who'll be interested in, in doing that tour with you. And uh, where else have come up this year? Um... Yeah, and, uh, and also, uh, so that, that would be something that I've already listed based on my experience and, you know, um, looking at the various tours. Um, I launched a uh, tailor-made tour page um, and I think I launched that just in time, actually. It's good timing. And uh, when the tours came back for me, roughly about mid-April of this year, um, certainly that took a few hits um, and some inquiries. And um, I, I 
got that page created to really um, give people ideas with some blogs uh, so that they can pick and choose within reason. Um, mm-hmm. And um, so we can share ideas and hence tailor made. So what's been especially popular is the mixture of Chartwell, so Winston Churchill's former family home, with Heber Castle, because um, in a blog that's published, um, it actually uh, describes the fact that the two locations, although they're completely different eras of our history, they're only about 15, 20 minutes drive from one another. So now this is a generalization I'm about to share, but usually I get couples and families, of course, and there could be one party in that particular family, that unit, these are private tours, who prefer perhaps the World War II Winston Churchill aspect, hence Chartwell. And then there'll be another element to that tour um, in the same day. And um, for, um, let's say if it's a couple, for the other partner to then enjoy uh, what she wants, for example, in terms of the Tudor theme. So that's worked really well. And um, in fact, that's been very rewarding uh, from the point of view of, you know, the wow factor and, um, you know, people experiencing, you know, two completely different things. Um, but but there is actually a commonality and both properties are actually in what we call the um, well, locally we call it the Weald, but it's actually called uh, the Weald of Kent or the Kentish Weald. So that's a medieval forest, a beautiful part of England, um, which my guests enjoy. The other one I would say, uh, and I'll, I'm going to say lastly for this podcast, but there are others, of course, is the medieval England tour. And this is especially close to my heart um, because... Um, people do want, where I said they want to go deeper, this is authentic England, all right? Day trips, yeah. London, people, and I occasionally get bookings last minute. If I'm available, I'll do it. Some people just, they enjoy London, but obviously it's it's been crowded at times, and they just want to get out for a day. They just want to get out, and they'll reach out to me, and it's not quite, help! But I can <laughs> I can tell by their inquiry that they do are that itching to get out of town. So they want some ideas. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely, John. And and, and I know um, often when we talk to people on our itinerary consultation, um, is that they are looking while they want to spend stay you know a few days in London, and if they are based in London, but they are looking at you know where can I go which is going to take me away from the hustle and bustle of the city just for, you know, and have a different experience. Um, and just a little bit of feedback, actually, just when you're talking about your Chartwell Heaver Castle Day, for example, that would be something that, you know, would appeal to to myself and Doug because he has far more of an interest in history of World War II than I do, um, but I'm certainly far more interested in kind of the Tudor aspect. So I, I love the fact that, um, not only are you tailor making it because obviously that's what you do, but you're also being able to com- combine two places, as you say, which can appeal to um, to, to two different kind of interests, as it were. Um, but fascinating to visit both of them, you know, and the fact that they are so close together, the ability to do that, um, you know, it's definitely I'm sure appeals to a lot of people. Um, so the medieval, sorry, we've talked a little bit more about your medieval day. So that's something that you've just. Um, come up with this year as the medieval one. Indeed, and thanks for sharing that, Tracy. It's good to hear that. Uh, of course, you you feel the same as a couple um, uh, about that. Yes, with medieval England. Um, now, this really is special to me because I spent a lot of time researching these places over the years. Got to know the people who work there, um, and. What I would say really is because these are private tours, um, I very rarely, unless they're especially close to one another, do more than two locations in a day. Um, Any more than where there's a risk of that rush feeling, which completely goes against, you know, the ethos really um, of our and the the objective of delivering uh, a private tour. So there's a bit of a mix and match. Uh, so in my medieval England listing, uh, for those who want to look it up, um, 
there are ideas in there. And um, so a popular one in there has been um, item moats. And this is a bit of a mouthful. And this uh, item moat is very precious to Britain. It's actually Britain's only small medieval house with a moat. And um, with that in mind, I've had some requests where people, you know, obviously everybody's different. I do, you know, Canterbury as well. And um, and it's, but the item moat and part of the medieval England tours, sometimes people write to me and they want their vernacular, um, meaning basically it's not just about the cathedrals. They want to see how people lived and their dwellings in the medieval days. And item moat is the perfect example. The other one that's um, pretty close is something called Knoll, um, which is up the road, and that's medieval too. And that is a historic palace where the various bishops and various archbishops of Canterbury used to reside and meet. Um, and um, again, it's it's part of authentic England, you know, and of course there are other places as well. But there's one more thing I would say that's just come to my mind, actually, um, because, of course, you know, driving my guests to and from these locations. And, of course, you know, when we visited these locations, um, there's a common theme or, or basically common bit of feedback um, that people have been telling me. And that is they feel that these places they go to is extra special because there's very much l- uh, less of an attraction feel to these places. They can literally breathe and feel it rather than see things behind glass cases. I think that's it. That's an advantage of being able to go and actually explore these places um, with you as well, because you are there to to help kind of facilitate, I guess, between that that environment and the person visiting. Indeed. Um, so you just touched on something, actually, uh, where I think this is the differential, that not just with me, but the whole thing is very conversational. Yeah. And, you know, I just took a pause in that to just to hopefully have people listening to this po- podcast think about that. Just take a back step. Um, and it's, I said it's not just with me. It's because I do try to go out my way to introduce my guests on a personal basis to those I've got to know at these venues so they can get a localized point of view, not just the attraction, oh, I work here and the facts, but it's the stories. Yeah. It's the stories and the soul of the place, you know? I think it's that, that, and that's the difference. And I think that's what's so special about being able to, to, to go out with a, you know, take a tour with yourself, John. Um, well, we're going to wrap up this this segment of the episode. Um, for everybody listening, uh, please be assured there will be links to John's tours in the show notes and also the blog post that he mentioned. Um, so those of you who also want to listen in a bit more detail about some of the tours that John just sort of spoke about in episode number six of the podcast, um, John talks in greater detail about a lot of those tours, so you can listen to that episode. But again, there will be links to John's tours in the show notes. He's also a um, an expert um, tour guide advisor on our uh, Facebook community as well. So in our private uh, UK and London travel plan and Facebook community. So pop over and join that as well, because John is often in there um, answering questions and, and helping out in there to talk about tours, particularly of Southeast England. Um, so thank you very much, John, for coming on the podcast again. I'm sure you will be on again <laughs> because we do love having you on. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, John. You can find links to all the destinations discussed in this episode on our website at UKTravelPlanning.com. If you need further assistance choosing the best day trips from London, we offer a UK travel planning consultancy service to help fine-tune your itinerary. You can also find a link to this on our website. If you've enjoyed our podcast, please consider leaving us a review and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. So all that leaves me to say is until next week, happy UK travel planning.